Watch out guys, there's a brand new, totally unique seasonal activity in Destiny with mechanics and gameplay that you have never seen before. Every single thing in this new seasonal activity override is brand new, created from the bottom. No reskinned assets, no gameplay mechanics that we have seen over and over again from previous seasons. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding guys, it's exactly the same thing. Hi guys, welcome to Gaming Watcher. My name is Rosen and in this video we're going to talk about this new seasonal activity override and all of the rewards that you can get from it, what builds you should use to be more efficient at it and we're also going to talk a little bit about this new situation that we find ourselves in in this season. You know we band together with the fallen and house them on a graveyard where we have slain generations of their species, like the nice guardians that we are. But at least we're banding together to kill other races, because that's just what we do. Now I'll make a full video about the Fallen and this new situation that we're in with the Fallen and what we're learning about the Fallen at the moment and their relationship to the Guardian, because that's actually pretty interesting. But that's gonna come out later this week for now, we're going to go into the override activity with the Russian psychopath Saint-14 and slay some Vex. Get out there, Guardian, and slay some Vex. That's, that's my best Saint-14 impression. Oh, wait, I actually got another one. <clears throat> I just love it when Uzair is fuck. So first of all, let's talk about Ether, because the, um, I wanted to say the seasonal artifact, but that's not it. The seasonal thing, like we had the hammer in the season of the chosen, is this splicer gauntlet. And so this gauntlet you can use to craft these key codes. To craft a key code, you need Ether. How do you gather Ether, you ask? And I'm so happy you asked that, imaginary viewer. And I'll tell you, to get Ether, you should complete playlist activities, public events, and defeat combatants anywhere in the system. Well, this this is not entirely true. At least the ether that you get from just doing anything is not really that much. What you should do instead is look down at the bottom here at the bonus activity. Bonus ether can be obtained by completing crucible matches. Now this changes every now and then. I I'm not sure if it's a daily rotation or a weekly rotation yet, but uh, it changes. And so it can be strikes, crucible, gambit, other stuff. And there's a huge difference in how much ether you get for normal activities and for this bonus activity. So my recommendation would be to just do the bonus activity if you're going for ether. But regardless, you will earn ether as you play the game normally and you know, level up and get the pinnacles and stuff. It's not that hard. So once you get 50 ether, you can craft a key code. And what the key codes are used for, I'll tell you when we get to the activity itself. But before that, let's just talk a little bit more about the rewards of this season. So in the helm, there is a new space available. And in that space, you can go and you can talk to kind of the vendor for the seasonal activity as usual. This time it's a splicer servitor and it has different bounties and it has different unlocks that you can get upgrades for the spicer glove. So let's just take a look at those. Okay, so down here in the helm, in the fallen area, we have the splicer servitor over here. And here, this, this, <laughs> this, this looks pretty unique, right? This looks like a new setup they've done for this season. Wow. Bungie, you just keep innovating, man. It's so insane. Sick. Okay, so it's the, exactly the same thing as the other seasons. You have this upgrade wall or whatever you want to call it. You get this currency, decrypted data, whenever you do the seasonal activity. And for that currency, you can buy upgrades. Now, if you haven't started this yet, I'll just go through which upgrades actually make sense to get in the beginning. So for example, this one, Ether Filter. Defeated combatants now have a higher chance to drop Ether. This is very useful because the more Ether you can get, the more of these conflux chests you can open and the more you will earn of this decrypted data and the more you can then upgrade. So this makes a lot of sense to get. Same with this one, override efficiency. All right, chests have increased rewards. Standard Vex chests now have a chance to drop seasonal gear. Conflux chests now have a chance to drop umbral engrams that can drop up to one focused umbral engram per week. So those are the ones 
that would make sense to to get first in my eyes then we have the memory expansion this is also a standard thing in these seasonal upgrades the gauntlet's ether capacity is increased by 50 and its key code capacity is increased by from three to four and so those three are the three that i would get first because it, that will allow you to be more efficient at farming this activity and that's really what you're going for in the beginning of the season here so then we have bounties the bounties basically just reward xp but the nice thing is that they're really easy to do and you can do them in this override activity and so if you're grinding for xp to level up the season pass just remember to get the bounties every time you're jumping in then as a new thing actually there are special seasonal mods here that you unlock as you earn reputation ranks with the splicer servitor and these are of the new elemental well type mods and I, I i haven't gotten too much into these kinds of mods yet uh, so i i can't really say whether these are really awesome or not but i would just pick them up that's what i've kind of experienced from previous types of mods like war mind cell mods and charge with light mods you just want all of them there's no reason not to get all of them you get so many mod components anyway and they cost so little and having all of the mods in the game just gives you so many possibilities of doing different builds for different kinds of activities and it's just it's nice to have a lot of different mods that you can kind of customize your build with it makes the game way more fun to play in my eyes at least and so just just get the mods okay just get them by the way remember that in this month i'm hosting a competition in my discord where people can make funny captions of my thumbnails and there's already a lot of them being made but at the end of the month i'm going to choose a winner and that winner is going to win a special secret prize i think it's going to be pretty fun i have something planned for that prize and i'm going to show you at the end of the month but if you want to get in on that and get a chance to win it and also just make fun of my face join the discord i'll leave a link in the description so you guys can join I love to see you in there to talk to you. Let's get on with the video. Now let's get into the activity and the rewards that you can actually get from playing the activity because at the end of the activity, there's two different chests. The one of them you need to unlock with the key code that you made with the gauntlet and the other one you can just open. Anyone can open that. So let's just get into the actual override activity. So the override activity is a lot like the seasonal activity that we had in Season of Arrivals. I think it was called Contact. It was a public event where you had to kill a lot of enemies and they dropped modes and then you had to bank the modes and then every now and then these powerful enemies would come along that you then had to kill to kind of get into the next phase. So this is kind of like that. The override event also works in these phases and every phase has the same elements to it. So first of all, you need to kill enemies and the enemies will drop these purple modes. You can carry up to 10 of these modes and then you can bank them in this giant terminal in the middle, it's Vex terminal. If you dunk 10 modes, you will spawn an ammo cache for the whole team so everyone can get their ammo restocked. So my recommendation would be to wait till you have those 10 modes to dunk every time. At some point, this terminal will get locked so you can't dunk any more modes and now you need to unlock. So several things will happen. Enemies will spawn and these you will see these kind of cubes hanging around on the terminal and one of them will glow red and you need to shoot the red data cube or whatever it is and you need to do that three times i think and then you will unlock the terminal again then these platforms will appear and you will have to jump up do a little bit of a jumping puzzle get up to the point that is marked on your screen and then you have to face the terminal and you have to press E or whatever button it is on your console or whatever you play on and hack the terminal and then it will be completely unlocked and you can start a new wave. Now every now and then a portal will open. There's this big Vex portal and it will open. I'm not entirely clear on when that happens if you have to bank a certain amount of modes or if it's when you kill those big powerful enemies that spawn. Sometimes it will open and <laughs> Saint-14 or Mithrax will make sure that you know that it's open now this is kind of an optional thing if you go into the portal there's a mini boss in there you can kill it you and you get what is called a data spike if i remember correctly you need to take that out and bank it in the terminal and when you do that you get a huge amount of 
progress. So this is kind of a mechanic that makes you able to complete this event faster than otherwise, but you don't have to do it. It's not necessary. It's not hard to do though. Like you can go in there one person and take care of this mini boss if you have the right weapons or mods equipped and it makes you go faster through the activity. So that's kind of nice if you're just farming rewards from this anyway. After you've been through this three times where the terminal has been locked down and you've unlocked it and started a new wave and so on three times you will spawn what Mithrax calls the vortex and you will jump down into the vortex and you will get into the vex network or <laughs> as, as same 14 call it the vex brain space so when you're in the vex brain space there's going to be a giant boss and the boss is not difficult whatsoever but it's damage gated so you can't just melt it down because who wants that so every time you hit the damage gate the whole fire team at least this week it wasn't like that last week but this week the whole fire team will get teleported or transmitted away from the boss and need to do a new jumping puzzle and on the way there will be a champion that you have to take down before you can progress and get back to the boss you can do damage again until you hit the next gate and rinse and repeat so you need to go through these gates but the more damage you can do in the damage phases, the faster you will go through it all. And you also need some ad clear ability to kind of get through those waves of ads in between as fast as possible. Now in the Vex network, before you get to the boss and actually also in between, they're kind of changing it up. Now we're in the second week as I make this video and they've changed it up a little bit since the first week. So what will happen is like in the beginning, you have to go through this jumping puzzle to, to get to the boss. On the way, if you have unlocked the upgrade and you have a key, you will be able to spawn these platforms that make jumping puzzle way easier. You will see that. You're probably seeing that if you've been in the activity. Just remember, it costs a key code. So if you only have one key code and you use it to spawn those platforms, you won't have any key code for the cash at the end of the activity. So you do that jumping puzzle and you get to the boss. So basically you're teleported away you need to do the jumbo puzzle again you need to kill the champion you need to get back to the boss and then a new damage phase starts and you do the whole thing over and over for three phases and then you kill the boss and then you get the two chests and from these two chests you can get like normal drops, glimmer, gear. And then from the conflux chest, you can get umbral engrams. And also if you have the right upgrades for the gauntlet, you can also get focused umbral engrams. So you can get with like focused for seasonal gear, seasonal armor, seasonal weapons, and so on. And I'm sure as you unlock more upgrades, you can get even more specific focused umbral engrams through this chest. So having a key code when you go into this activity is, is quite important in terms of getting the most out of it and personally i wouldn't bother doing the activity at all if i didn't have a key code for that conflux chest at the end then i would rather farm for some ether so i could craft some more key codes so i could open that conflux chest at the end now let's talk a little bit about bills what bills to use to be most efficient at this for this activity i use charged with light mainly and i try to buff up the damage of whatever weapons i have equipped because there is a lot of powerful enemies i wouldn't focus on ad clearing because ad clearing is is never a huge problem in destiny sometimes it can make sense to focus your build around ad clearing but there are a lot of large powerful enemies and champions in this activity and so i focus my build around high damage because that also helps with ad clearing but when those powerful enemies spawn i have a bigger chance of taking them down quickly when i focus on that so i will for example use the lament exotic sword and then i will use the charge for light mod called loosened blade so that i do more damage with the sword when i'm charged with light and then i always use the taking charge mod to get charged with light that's and that's exceptionally good for this activity because you're six players and like orbs of power are just you're swimming in orbs of power basically there's also power everywhere so you're constantly picking up orbs of power so if you become charged with light by picking up 
orbs of power, you're going to be charged with light most of the time. And so I use stacks on stacks with that, which makes sure that every time I get one stack of charge with light, I get an extra stack. And I use the mod supercharged, which allows me to have up to five stacks of charge with light at a time. So that with something like loosened blade or something like high energy fire, that just give me a bonus damage to all weapons. I will go in with something like that and I will make sure to have these high damage weapons like the lament for example on me so that I can just melt those champions and powerful enemies really quickly. It also allows me to go into the Vex portal and take down the boss all by myself. So I wouldn't think too much about something like war mine cells for an activity like this unless you're counting on like just collecting modes and not really focusing on the powerful enemies, but just focusing on clearing ads and collecting modes, then doing something like a war mine cell build might help in this activity. <clears throat> also being able to do like single target high damage helps a lot for the boss phase, so getting to clearing those damage gated phases more quickly and get through the activity more quickly. Good, good guardian slay some Vex. Okay. I hope you got something out of this guide, guys. If you did, leave a like on the video and also let me know what you think about the override activity and maybe also what weapons or builds that you like to use to be more efficient at it. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.